I used to really dislike bases on terrain, but now that I'm making more organic kind of sort of scatter terrain, I've come to really like them. My torment project made me realize how fun it can be to just make some bases and freeform craft on them. Normally I wouldn't cut or sand MDF in my studio. It's just way too dusty, especially in a room full of finished projects where every surface is painted black. But I had just gotten myself a new toy that I wanted to share with you, and filming in my basement where I'd normally do this is a big pain. I've always used a very cheap palm sander to bevel my edges, and it works just fine, but it's sort of awkward. So I treated myself by buying a little bench top sander in the hopes that it would maybe be more practical. Too bad the vacuum in my studio is the wrong connection size to use with it. And again, uh, the whole thing is just way too dusty to do in the studio. So I, I finished them off downstairs. The sander turned out to be a good purchase though. I gotta say it let me get much wider and more gradual bevels in just a fraction of the time. But yeah, next time I think that it's a good idea to cut MDF in the studio while filming, well, tell me to remember how hard it is to clean up off of all of these black surfaces. I've been wanting to do modular swamp terrain for ages, but have always held off because I thought that, you know, I'd want to do them like tiles to make things more realistic and really connected. But building that way was sort of off-putting to me and I, I never did. I decided now to go the opposite route and do what I did with my Torment project and just use sculpt mold and little bits from various kits to make these. Doing them as scatter terrain would allow a lot of rich detail and texture and let them be used alone on a battle mat or on a nice grass battle board. And they could actually be used with my Torment set together because I'm sure Torment has a swamp somewhere in it and the two styles would fit together nicely. I used some bits from Loot Studios that I printed along with my sweet hag model, but to really get that look of mixed and interesting items, I threw in a bunch of bits from various different models, kits, and sets. I looked for stuff that might actually get lost in a bog. Wagon parts, crates, barrels, chests. In my mind, this swamp would closely resemble the bogs in Witcher 3. Now, I haven't played that game in ages, but I feel like that setting is sort of ingrained in my memory, and I wanted to capture that vibe. I knew I needed some dead gnarly trees to dress these up and give them a bit of verticality. Some thin real bush roots would be perfect for this, but since the ground is currently frozen six feet deep outside and under a couple feet of snow, I'd have to make do with what I had on hand inside. I did have these wire trees that I think I had gotten from the dollar store years ago around Halloween. They're pretty simple, just wire armatures wrapped in paper, no detail at all, but good enough to make that kind of creepy tree silhouette that I wanted. Various other dollar store plants were snipped up and placed around to give the bog some life. I mean, this place is supposed to be creepy, but it should still sustain some sort of life. It is a swamp. And Craft Lichen was a great fit for this project. It really adds a lot of texture and richness and gives things a really creepy look. In my head, I had planned to paint everything out, including the plant life and any flocking that was on it all at the same time. This way, everything would get a nice, dark, cohesive look, which is what I'm learning to really love about building these sets. The sculpt mold alone paints up to look like really nice mud, but I wanted some smaller kind of vegetation and texture. Dry tea is perfect for this. It has a nice mixture of sizes and textures that do really well to decorate something like a forest floor or a swamp. I just saturate the whole base in some scenic cement, sprinkle on the tea, and then saturate it again. This really locks it in place and makes it pretty hard and durable. I'm sitting here waiting like a million hours for all this watered down glue to dry. A couple things I noticed I want to take care of. One is this wheel just looks way too not broken. We got to fix that. That's better. I got this barrel here. Kind of like the idea of an adventurer. It's uh, dead, slumped against this barrel. So I took a look at what I had and I found this one cheap WizKids mini that I'll never likely use in this pose that I think could work. Cut off his feet. Something just like that fits in there nicely. Now we gotta let it dry. While that dries, let's look at today's sponsor. Loot Studios is one of my absolute favorite suppliers of 3D models that you can print at home. With a membership to their service, you get access to a ton of cool themed models each and every month. 
The theme this month is Granny's Prophecy, a set filled with hags and swamp enemies. There's even a giant hags house with a playable interior on the classic chicken legs. You know what this is. And there's busts of the characters too, if you just want to paint them and not game with them. And, and of course there's hero minis, one of which will be perfectly at home roaming the swamps that I'm creating today. The models all come pre-supported, so they're really easy to just drop into your slicing software and get printing. I've yet to have a failure with any of their prints or models, which says a lot because I'm not that experienced of a printer yet. I really just kind of drag and drop and hope for the best. And if you're a gamer, you can print out the 32 millimeter scale minis, or if you're just a painter, you can print out the bigger 75 millimeter scale display ones that they also supply, or use those larger scale versions within your terrain like I have in the past. Loot is basically the best money you can spend on a printable model supplier, and I fully encourage you to do so. Every model of theirs that I've painted turns out to be one of the models that I'm really proud of my paint job on. I don't know why, it just is. I'll put a link in the video description so you can sign up now before this cool set is gone. I took the exact same painting approach with these as I did with my Torment pieces. I wanted a cohesive and easily replicable scheme. I did basically everything with an airbrush and acrylic inks. This is honestly the most satisfying way I've found to paint terrain. It's just really an experience in instant gratification. Sure, it will never look the same as individually painting out each little detail with different colors and shades, but with something like a swamp, I mean, that's totally fine. The more I do this hobby, the more I prefer to approach terrain pieces like a piece of art rather than a model, where the terrain sort of becomes a background in a fantasy type landscape painting rather than an item that's in the forefront. And in a painting like that, you know, the backgrounds would have this sort of unified style and color that more implies detail than actually showing and highlighting it all. This method also just really fits with this type of terrain build, where it's kind of a collage of textures, materials, and shapes. The Zenithal highlighting brings it all out in sort of like this Chris Cooksey kind of style. I don't know, it just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside, and I really love it. There's something very satisfying about using just two or three different shades of ink to block out and blend colors. Trying to make certain objects read as different materials, but just by using sweeping broad color transitions is much more visceral and natural to me than carefully painting out everything with 20 different shades and a paintbrush. I don't know, this approach of building and painting has really just unlocked something in me that I don't think was there before as a hobbyist. It gives building a different feeling, a, a, a different vibe. The reward versus effort is just awesome with it. It's raw, it's natural, it might not produce a result that everyone loves, but personally, I just freaking love it. It's so satisfying. After this process, I just added a very tiny amount of rust paint and dry pigments to a few select areas, and quickly dry brushed a few random skulls white. The only downside to the ink method is that it's very glossy when it's dry, so it requires a varnish after. And since this is a swamp, I, I felt that a true matte varnish wouldn't be appropriate, and a little bit of sheen from a satin varnish would work best. Then a tiny bit of sepia wash on just the skulls, and these pieces were ready for the finishing touch. The gross swamp water. I'm not using fancy resin for this, I'm just using my favorite dollar store five minute epoxy. This stuff is hella cheap very reliable and I can stockpile it and keep the bottles on hand for many years without any worry of them going wonky or sour like some resins do. This stuff never fails. It also cures wicked fast so you don't need to wait until the next day or two for it to be ready, you know, just a few minutes. There are two distinct flaws with using this epoxy as water though. One is that it bubbles a lot during curing, and you can't simply pop those bubbles with a heat gun like you can with some other resins because the heat and the curing speed is just way too fast. But with something like gross bog water, those bubbles become a feature, not a bug, so it's perfect. The other flaw is that this stuff is really thick, meaning it's pretty hard to pour and it won't really flow into the areas that it should. The good news is that you absolutely can thin it using isopropyl alcohol. 
and you don't need a lot, maybe 10 to 20% alcohol versus the epoxy to get it to kind of pour and kind of move and spread out. Likely you can make it as thin as you want, but be warned, the more you thin it with alcohol, the longer it's gonna take to cure, the softer it's gonna be once it's cured. And with a lot of alcohol, I would guess that there's a possibility it might shrink as it cures. And this brand, like many five minute epoxies, goes silver when you start to mix it. That's normal. The addition of alcohol, though makes it go a milky white, which can be a bit nerve wracking and like what the hell's going on? But I've done this before and I did a few tests the first time I tried it, so I knew that that white color was very temporary. I used a bit of green wash to tint the epoxy, but not so much that it wouldn't be translucent once cured. That's a mistake that I've made far too often. So I wanted to be careful not to overdo it here, but with the milky reaction, it can be a little tough to gauge the translucency of the color as you're mixing it. So you gotta do a bit of guesswork and have a bit of faith. And since this epoxy is still a little bit thick, I did need some help to kind of tease it and move it around into some areas, but overall it flowed pretty well and the color very quickly started to change back to what would be its final form. 20 minutes later and these things would be ready to drop on a gaming table and use. Overall, I'm really happy with these. I, I do wish that I had made more of them at the same time, but I wasn't sure how they'd turn out, so I didn't want to get too deep into it. Thankfully, they're pretty quick to do in bulk now that I have the process sorted, and hopefully one day I'll force myself to big up a builder set of these because I definitely think they deserve it. And I feel an insatiable urge from my childhood to make one with a sinking horse. I hope you all enjoyed this video and learned something valuable along the way. If you did, give the video a like and let me know in the comments below. If you want to grab some hobby supplies and are unsure what you need, go check out blackmagiccraft.ca. There I've curated an essential equipment page that links to and explains the stuff that I use. The best part is that shopping through that page helps to financially support the production of videos like this one. And I love making these videos for the community. And one of the main reasons that I'm able to do so is because of the wonderful generosity of viewers on Patreon. So if you want to help me keep helping the community, the best way you can do that is on Patreon. And I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. That's it for this one, guys. Cheers. See you next week.